want to move on to the, one of the next notable studies from uh, the ESMO meeting, which is the ARINO trial. Uh, so this was a uh, phase three international study for men with hormone sensitive prostate cancer that uh, were newly diagnosed and um, uh, you know, essentially treatment naive with the exception of uh, you know, ADT monotherapy for, you know, I think it was up to 90 days. So men were randomized to receive either ADT monotherapy or in combination with darolutamide. And the primary endpoint of RPFS um, was observed in this trial, in addition to uh, an early trend towards an overall survival advantage, although the data was um, immature. Okay. Um, side effect profiles were as expected um, relative to other darolutamide-containing trials. And uh, I think we're all pleased to see uh, data in this uh, capacity because um, we view darolutamide as a very reasonable option amongst our other ARPIs, and to see it, um, uh, it without chemotherapy um, in the HSPC setting with positive results, um, you know, opens up some options. So again, I'll open the question up to the group. Um, what is everyone's thoughts on the Aranote data? Who wants to take it? It, I mean, to? it's not surprising. <laughs> I think I would have been shocked if it wasn't a positive study. We know yeah. from, mm -hmm. you know, multiple phase three trials that adding an ARPI up front to ADT benefits progression-free survival, mm -hmm. and I, I'm guessing we're going to see an overall survival too with um, Arano once it's a little more mature. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, I think it's more of a practical thing, right? You got to go through the motions, show that it has a benefit there, and hopefully this leads to an approval and we don't mm -hmm. have any of these challenges in terms of getting mm -hmm. darolutamide monotherapy for patients presenting with hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. um, as it stands, the approval is really just based on the Aerosense trial, which looked at docetaxel darolutamide and showed a benefit there compared to docetaxel control. So. I think depending on sort of how insurers look at the situation, sometimes you can get it monotherapy, many times you can't, and so mm -hmm. this is gonna make it a lot easier. And It's good to have options. Mm -hmm. As we know from the other studies, latitude, arches, et cetera, you know, we already knew that metastatic hormone sensitive disease, at addition of a ARPI, is almost essential now, I feel, uh, for majority of the eligible patients based on the improvement in PFS as well as overall survival, so this, adds another option to our different uh, armamentarium of uh, agents that we have now to consider adding to the initial ADT. I'd like to comment on all these, uh, on, uh, add to your great comments, and, and do a little bit of a flashback on when we were first listening to the data, Darylud, I might remember it came across and we were listening to presentations with regard to Aramis, suggesting that there was a very favorable safety profile. And a lot of us were yeah. like, that can't be true. And that is because even though, for instance, myself, I had been involved in apparatorins, lutamide, apalutamide, I had not been in trials with darolutamide. Mm -hmm. And I actually had next to me one of the PIs and I said, is this for real? And he said, oh yeah, you bet it's for real. I couldn't <laughs> tell what was perceived or not. So with time, we all started to use it yeah. and we became more comfortable. And I believe that Aranaut was a coerced and required trial mm -hmm. because we wanted to see it yeah. being able to be within the doublets and in the guideline and not mm -hmm. just stuck there from the Aracens indication. Mm -hmm. Just for those who are not so much in tune with how these trials were designed, Aracens design was essentially mandated because back in 2014-15, through Charted and through Stampede, we had the docetaxel part in there. So it was designed after. And I think because there was a lot of criticism this morning about why was it allowed to do it versus an ADT alone, it was done in those countries where there was really no access to a doublet. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it was discussed, I may have missed it, patients would probably be able to cross over once they reach that RPFS mm -hmm. because, of course, you have to give them. We have to look at that. Was it published? I don't know yet. Um, Not yet. No. I don't think so, and I don't no. recall that. We'll, still we'll have to see the post. Yeah, yeah. 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 mm -hmm. Because it would be strange if they mm -hmm. weren't off. Even when we did profound, we had that crossover. Mm -hmm. So all in all, we're going to hear of one more trial coming from the U.S. That's a single arm trial, the Arasec, and I think it's going to give us more that, you know, Component. understanding and and the acceptance within the guidelines to use it as a doublet. Mm -hmm. One comment about the overall survival, you said it, it's too early. Yeah. And we all know that within the first two years, we unfortunately lose, lose those patients, whatever we treat them with, that had a very, very aggressive disease. And that's, I think it was only 25 months 
of median? Um, they had about two years of yeah. median follow-up, yeah. correct, that yeah. Was, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I hear short yeah. follow-up. No, ex uh, excellent points. And again, um, this study will, you know, hopefully afford uh, yet again another option for uh, the management mm -hmm. of um, hormone-sensitive disease. Um, and again, it's an embarrassment of riches. You know, the adding these extra agents creates more um, challenges in the clinic, but it does open opportunity for personalization, which, you know, we're working with limited in information. We both, you know, a common theme of the meeting is the need for more biomarkers and um, predictors mm -hmm. for which therapies are best. But, um, you know, having more options, you know, can help at the, the patient level.